So last time we talked about bounded contexts and the biggest architectural problems that I see in bigger Rails applications that are already a few years old. So let's do a small recap. You have one bounded context and you have another bounded context and the bounded context consists of data and code. Data and code. And I told you that the very big problem that I see is that um, the other bounded context, its code, it's looking directly into the data of the first bounded context, okay? So you have, for example, um, payments looking directly into order to see how much money should be paid or orders looking directly into payments to figure out whether the order was paid and whether the products can be delivered and so on and so on. So whenever we try to refactor this code, we can't do it easily because it's not just this code reading this data and if it was that, we, we, we would be able to um, easily see what part of code is using the data in which way and how we can refactor it to better suit our new needs, new requirements. But the problem is that there might be many, many other places, other bounded contexts like that, looking directly into the data. For example, by using race associations and crossing the database back and forth, back and, back and forth uh, to figure out something. So the even though technically we think about some part of our application, like for example, basket or order with the data that it has to make sure that the flow is uh, correct and that everything works nicely. Um, we can't we can't easily update the code that is using this data because there are multiple other code bases looking into there and then we are stuck with legacy. We can't change anything, we can't innovate, we can't um, make new features, fix bugs because we are too scared that something else will broke because there are different parts of code reading the same data, okay? So that was the problem that we talked recently about. And I wanted to present you with an idea of how we are trying to solve it. And the idea basically is that whenever something happens here and the code publishes, um, publishes domain event, domain event, okay? Or you can think about it as fact. This is something that happened. So the, the code, uh, something happened, for example, the order was placed or a new order line was added, product was added to the, to the basket. We published domain events. And if there is someone else interested in that, um, they can consume this and whatever they need, they can store in their own data, basically duplicating it, but not necessarily fully. Usually the other context only needs parts of the data, not, not everything. It's not interesting in everything that this part is doing, only something smaller probably. And so that's how we are trying to solve the problem so that these two bounded contexts are more independent than that, so that you can work on them without worrying about the other things. And when you do that, you move the, you move the interface, okay? So when, when this, this code is looking into this data, then your database schema is the interface. And you can't change it easily because other parts depend on that, but you would like to change it easily. You would like this bounded context to own the data and change it in any way if it's 
needed for the performers for scalability or whatever reason you would like to maybe even change and move to a completely different database right that would be nice um, but you can't do that if there are others part of code reading here so um, when you start publishing the domain event then the interfaces moves here the events have some kind of attributes and they are, they are the interface that you use to communicate with the rest of your applications. Um, so there's the schema of this, uh, of this event and when you publish it, um, that's what should stay relatively unchanged. And even if it changes, you should be, it should be easy for you to see um, how many contacts are surprised, uh, are, are subscribed, sorry, are subscribed to this domain event and consume it. And then you know exactly all the places that you need to go and fix it. So that's one thing that you know. And the other thing is, you know, um, is the intention of what actually happened, you know it, because the domain event has a name. So for example, um, user registered by email or user joined from Facebook. So, you know, better if you look into the data, you might not see, well, why is it the data this way and not the other? What happened? You might not know, but with the domain events, you know, the name and attributes. So we know what actually happened here and you can react accordingly. We don't need to rely on the data schema okay so the data is private and the published the published domain events are um they're the interface they're public and that's where you need to care about compatibility with the consumers okay and look how similar it is to the object-oriented programming where you have methods with interfaces, but the data inside class is private unless you expose it in some kind of way. So here we are exposing what's happening in this bounded context by publishing events, publishing domain events describing what happened. And maybe someone consumes them because they are interested and they need to, to do it, do it something based on them, maybe they need to use it later, and maybe there is no one interested and no one consumed that event so far, but who knows what will happen later in the application. So the event is consumed by the different bounded context and the parts of it that are needed can be stored in an internal, um, internal storage in its own part of database that no one else should look into it because this bounded context is the owner of this data and this bounded context is owner is, uh, of this data, this part of your database and no one else should, re should look into it, should read it because that way you can refactor this context very easily because you know that you just need to read this very small part of code to know what's happening here and how you can change that so that everything is still working. You don't need to have all the other places in your mind. That's very hard to keep all the places in your mind. And one of the challenging problems that you can see with that is like, okay, but what about reporting? My management wants to have 1000 reports about what's happening in our system. Um, we need to have these reports that are going across our whole application to figure out how we are making money, what's working and what's not working. And maybe we will talk about it in the next episode. And uh, now I'm just uh, going to tell you that the solution is what's called the read model. So you have like reporting bounded context and it's consuming and the, the domain events from multiple bounded contexts and it's building the and it's building the reports that you want okay so um, reporting 
read model. So instead of looking into the schema again, you just consume all the events published in a different parts of your application and build read model. So that might be the solution for you. And um, so that only one context, only one piece of code owns given piece of data. Thanks. Yeah.